Hi, it's Dr. Neye here, and in today's video, I'll be talking about the differences between plaque and calculus, ways to prevent plaque buildup, and how calculus can be detrimental to your overall dental health. Wait, I'm sure you're wondering, calculus, what has math got to do with my teeth? Just stick with me. Now your teeth are very tough and they can handle a lot of wear and tear. But if you allow plaque to build up in certain areas, they can eventually calcify and form what you call calculus, which can lead to gum disease. Now what is dental plaque? Dental plaque is a soft sticky film filled with bacteria that accumulate on the surfaces of your teeth. It is usually pale white in color and is what you take off when you brush your teeth. Now, plaque starts to form a few hours after brushing, especially when the bacteria in plaque mixes up with saliva and starchy foods. You tend to feel it more in the morning, especially when you don't brush the night before. When you run your tongue across the surfaces of your teeth, you feel a kind of fuzzy feeling. That is dental plaque. Now, according to research, dental plaque contains over 700 species of bacteria. Shocking, right? Now, with these bacteria, you have some that are good and some that are not so good. Why should dental plaque be removed? Now, dental plaque, like I said, contains bacteria. When you have food remnants left on your teeth, these bacteria act on those food remnants and they produce an acid. Now, this acid over time tends to soften the dental enamel, which can lead or which will lead to a dental cavity. If this cavity gets big enough, it will eventually involve the deeper structure of the tooth, which is the pulp. Now, the pulp contains nerves and blood vessels, so definitely you will end up having toothache. And if the damage is too extensive, there are chances that you may eventually lose that tooth. Now, more importantly, dental plaque can actually cause what we call gingivitis. Gingivitis simply means inflammation of the gums. When the dental plaque accumulates along the gum lines, the gums become inflamed. Now, if gingivitis is left to progress, it can eventually affect the bone underneath the gum, which definitely will lead to bone loss and you can end up losing that tooth. So what's the difference between plaque and calculus? If dental plaque is not removed on time, it can eventually accumulate and then mineralize or harden. And once this happens, it's no longer called dental plaque, but then it is called calculus or tartar. Now, once calculus is formed, it creates a base where more plaque can accumulate and it hardens and the cycle keeps going on and on. Now, this accumulated calculus can eventually cause what we call periodontal disease if care is not taken. This accumulated plaque and calculus eventually makes your gums to become inflamed and tender. And this is the early stage of gum disease. Calculus is hard, smooth, and has a yellowish to dark brown color. It usually coats on the exterior of the teeth and sometimes it can accumulate under the gum which makes effective brushing very difficult. With gingivitis, usually just the gums are inflamed, but if this is left to go untreated, it can eventually lead to what we call periodontal disease, where there is gum recession, bone loss, tooth mobility, and eventually you can actually lose that tooth. So why should you visit the dentist? Can't I just take it off at home? No. Calculus is hardened. Your toothbrush is not designed to take off calculus. It is designed to take off plaque. So when calculus accumulates, you need to visit your dental clinic. A thorough examination will be done for you. And then a procedure we call scaling and polishing will be recommended. Now during the process of scaling and polishing, an ultrasonic scaler or a hand scaler will be used to take off all the accumulated calculus. For deeper accumulations, especially those that have gone below the gum line, a gum treatment we call subgenital curettage or wood planing can be recommended so that you can have an effective and proper clean. These treatments actually help to stop the inflammatory process, promote gum healing, and prevent the progression of bone loss. How can you prevent plaque from building up and accumulating over time? Some self-care tips will be one rinsing after every meal and after every drink. This helps to dislodge any food remnants, thereby limiting the accumulation of dental plaque. It also helps to eliminate stains, especially when taking dark colored beverages. Two will be limiting frequent intake of sugary and starchy foods. This can actually help to reduce the accumulation of dental plaque. Also note that beverages
beverages like soda and energy drinks are very acidic and this can lead to what we call erosion of the enamel which can eventually lead to tooth sensitivity. Number three is proper oral hygiene practices. We advise you brush twice daily in the morning and at night and then flossing at least once a day. This helps to keep plaque accumulation under control. Now when brushing, please use a soft to medium to toothbrush so that you don't cause undue damage to your gums and your teeth and a fluoride containing toothpaste. Take time to reach every tooth in your mouth and don't forget your tongue. Number four, schedule regular dental visits at your local dentist at least every six months. This enables early detection of dental issues so that they can be treated early before they become worse or become more expensive. So we've come to the end of this video. Please like, leave a comment and share this video with someone. Also, please subscribe so that you can get more videos available to you and I'll see you in my next one.